Another way that we can make things move in processing is by using vectors. Uh, in this case, we're going to use p-vectors. Um, we're going to start with a uh, two-dimensional p-vector. Um, it's going to have x and y values, but we can also have uh, one with three dimensions, x, y, z, if we're in 3D space. Um, there are more uh, complicated parts of this, such as the magnitude and heading that we can access, but I want to start with something simple and build up from there. Uh, <clears throat> Here's some code that I have just to go over uh, sort of a, a intro into this topic. Um, a P vector, we're gonna declare uh, two P vectors, V1 and V2. Um, inside of the setup, I have a uh, 400 by 400 pixel composition. Um, this new P vector I'm creating is gonna have values of zero and zero, and you these can correspond to X and Y values. And we have another uh, vector that's one and one. What I'm gonna do is use this first P vector uh, as uh, to hold the uh, position values and then add on uh, one and one th this P vector um, to like add add velocity to that add movement to it. So inside the draw, I have a, a white background. I'm adding these vectors. So I have the position and then I'm adding uh, this uh, second vector onto it. And then you can see the ellipse that I'm drawing is going to grab that X value, the first value from the, the from V1 vector, and then it's going to grab the second value, the Y value. And because we're adding these, this is going to be constantly updated. I should see this move in a diagonal line from the top 0, 0 to 1, 1. And you can see that's happening there. Uh, if we make changes to this, for example, if I made it 2 and 2, this can go twice as fast. And you're seeing that we can have these things uh, we could start at different values. So I could start in the center uh, and we could even have things happen like moving negative. Uh, so we're now where the Y direction is moving in the negative uh, and using these ideas and these techniques, um, we can drive the movement of uh, objects on the screen. So here's a more complicated example of that. Okay, here I want to take uh, an example that's on the processing.org website. This is uh, some bouncing balls that are using p-vectors and um, adapt this and work with this and maybe uh, hopefully explain how p-vectors uh, can be used. Um, what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, start a sketch here. I'm going to first create a class, um, much like this, this example, uh, a ball class. And uh, you know, the code is here for reference, and I'm going to just be looking at that as I go. Um, here's the tab for the, the ball class. So um, we're going to build this class out. Again, we're going to have variables, uh, the constructor, and any functions right here. Uh, the variables that we're going to declare are p vector for position. And this is going to give us, uh, you know, x and y values for that position, and a p vector for the velocity, uh, and that's going to let us store those x and y values for velocity. Okay. Uh, oh, we also need a, a float for the radius, um, and I'm going to simplify a little bit. I'm going to just start with those things. Uh, here, I'm going to pass some values into it. So uh, we'll need a float x and a float y. Um, I need a, a, a velocity x value, so I'm going to maybe say vx and uh, vy float radius. I think that will, I think that might be enough for right now, and we're gonna we'll add to this as we go. Um, so let me just make my window a little bit wider so we can see all the code. Um, okay, so. Uh, I think what we need to say is, let me just verify. Yeah, position. So that uh, position vector that we we declared up there, we're going to create that um, new p p vector, and we're going to give it those x and y values. I believe that's yeah, that's how that works. Um, for velocity, we'll do a similar thing where we'll say is equal to new p vector uh, v x and v y. Uh, Again, our goal is to create an object or class here and, and feed these values in. Uh, okay, and then 
uh, radius. Oh, I kind of messed up here. I want to uh, just pass these variables. So I'm just going to say radius is, is equal to temp radius. Uh, I think that's enough for me to start with the functions. Um, and if you look at the functions here, I'm going to simplify it a little bit. I'm just going to use update, check boundary collision. I'm not going to worry about the the ball collisions because that's a lot of code. I just want to keep it simple. And then there is also a display function. So I might just, just for the sake of time, kind of copy and paste these things into it. Uh, this uh, this code is a bunch of if statements that kind of check to see if the object is at the edge of the boundary. So that's that piece right there. And then the update is just adding uh, that velocity, the p-vector, onto the position. Um, so we're adding x and y. Uh, and let me just make sure I put these in the right place. Clean that code up. Uh, I think that is good to go. Uh, let's go back into our uh, main sketch. And we need to, uh, we, we want to create um, an array uh, to, to populate this. This is uh, an array with only two items, but we want to make this something that we can feed a lot of items into. So the, the array is going to be made of these ball objects. We're going to call the array ball, and we'll say uh, new ball. And then we can put in a number, like, like right now I'll say 10, but uh, we can always adjust that. Uh, so let's do our void setup and our void draw. Uh, okay, so in in the setup, maybe we'll make this kind of a tall vertical composition. Uh, we can add pixel density two to make it a little bit higher resolution. Um, and now we need to go in and initialize these balls at the top. So uh, we'll create a for loop uh, while i is less than balls.length, i plus plus. So we'll add one so that we go through it sequentially. Um, and what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll initialize each of these new ball. And we really want to check again that these numbers and values match up. So right now we have five of these in their floats. Um, and we could start with we could start with random values. So if we want these to be randomly positioned on the screen, maybe it's random width, random height. Uh, the next values are the the velocity, the x value. So maybe it's a a number between one and five. Uh, the y velocity could be also one and five, and then the size of this. Um, maybe it's a random value from 100. So here we've just kind of uh, initialized uh, these values down in the draw. We want to you know, maybe have a background. Here's a white background. And then we want to draw these things again. We can use that same for loop to run through uh, and iterate on all of these. Uh, we just want to call all the functions on here. So uh, the functions that we are going to run are update. Um, and just want to check. So update, check boundary collision. We're going to use the dot syntax here. So there's a period, uh, semicolon at the end, and then these. There we go. So let's run that again. And now it should be hitting the edges and changing direction. There we go. So that's what that looks like. Uh, if we want to ch change this number, we just modify that. And uh, yeah, that's that's an example of that. Uh, what this looks like. So, using this as a base, maybe I'll just start to play around with this and, and add maybe some colors, um, maybe map these values or, or kind of do some things with it that might make it f seem more orderly and less random. So uh, let's go ahead and start doing that. Maybe from just a visual perspective, I want to add in a color, and that's not something I've put in here. So. Uh, Maybe I'll declare that variable color, and I'll rewrite this to accept a color variable. I'll call it temp c, and I want to make sure that I'm feeding the color in down here. 
So now uh, this uh, is going to take f six values, and the last one is going to be a color variable. The way we can put in a, a variable like that is, uh, you know, and I guess we could do it randomly or we could, you know, map it. Um, I'll, I'll just do it simply by doing a color um, and doing random values here. Uh, I think I can just copy and paste this in. And let's see, that should give us some random values. Oh, am I missing a, there we go. I think I'm missing a parentheses. Uh, oh, that's not really working in that case. Oh, because I didn't, sorry, I didn't update the fill down here. It's, it's still set to 204. Uh, we'll just, we'll set uh, that value to C. And then we go get some random colors uh, moving around in there. Okay. Um, I'm just playing visually too. So another thing I might do is change the blend mode to multiply. It's kind of a nice effect. Just showing what that does. Uh, now that they kind of, uh, you can see how they overlay and the colors actually mix together a little bit. Okay. So, um, Let's, let's keep playing around with this. Right now we have this set to random width and random height. Um, we could do something like, uh, maybe they all start from the same X value. Maybe they start from the, the center. So we're just playing around with this. Um, maybe we map the values. So we'll say uh, from I, using I and the, the minimum value is zero, the max value is balls.length. And maybe we map this across um, height divided by four and height divided by four times three. So it's, we're kind of centering that in the, um, in the composition. Let's just take a look at what that looks like. So this starts off as this kind of giant uh, line. You know, there's a range they're still kind of uh, randomly sized. So maybe you want to map this as well. And we can grab this map function. You know, if you wanted them to be, uh, uh, to go up from size, maybe from 10 to uh, 300, that's pretty big range. Now we can see that they're kind of ordered. Yeah, there's that, that top one is three or 10. The bottom one is 300. <clears throat> They're moving in an irregular, uh, at an irre irregular speed, because this is random. But you know, you could, you could give them the same values. You could even just say three and three is going to give diagonal movement again. Uh, it's kind of slow. I think. Oh, these things are bouncing back and forth. That's why it's doing that. Um, maybe this is. Again, I'm throwing in numbers and some of this is, is successful and some of this isn't. So I, I can play around with this a little bit more if I want to. Um, <clears throat> you know, you, you might even think about uh, mapping, mapping the speed so that maybe the, sm the smaller the, the ball is, the faster it might go. So, you know, in that case, uh, we'll, we'll set our mins and maximums differently. So maybe it's like uh, 10, 10 to one. So we're going in, in the opposite direction. Uh, and let's do that again. Um, I think I accidentally deleted the uh, radius value in here. So let me fix that. I think that should do it. Yeah. So now you can see these smaller circles move a little bit faster than these bigger circles. And we've just kind of mapped those values around. And I think if I, if I just let this run for a little bit, the, you know, it'll, it'll start to create more separation and maybe create some more interesting visuals or patterns this way. So, uh, Again, this is just one example of, of taking p vectors um, and 
perhaps simplifying it, um, instead of having X speed and Y speed or separate vari variables for that, you can, you can store them with a P vector and add them together and get something like this.